What's good football fans? Back at you once again with another video. And I wanted to come on today and look at some of this coaches film, this all 22, and specifically the wide receiver group. And of course, I mean in the trio of Curtis Samuel, Terry McLaurin, and Jahan Dotson. Those three guys specifically were targeted 20 times. And in the case of Samuel, he had four carries as well. And of course, between the three of them, they had four receiving touchdowns. At any rate, looking at it from the televised version that was, you know, what we saw yesterday, I wasn't able to get really that great of a feel on things. So I wanted to take a closer look, and I have cut a few uh, of the plays out, a couple of the incompletions to try to shorten this up a little bit. And I'm going to start out by looking at a few of the Samuel plays, and I enjoyed the way that they were, you know, plugging him in and using him pretty effectively, at least from the get-go of the game. It seemed like as time went on, you know, maybe Jacksonville caught up to what uh, Scott Turner was trying to do there. I'm not sure, but Samuel definitely looks like he has, you know, that extra little jump, that extra little energy back in his step, which was great to see. And on this play right here, you could just see that, yeah, I mean, that was definitely always going to be a touchdown on that play right there. You know, gets his little dance on afterwards. And I always enjoy seeing these guys connect and doing what they're supposed to do at the goal line. I mean, that is definitely what we want to see, right? Watch the play again. Um, I, I just enjoy seeing, you know, a good plan come together. And that's definitely something that they plan for months right there. Watch it again from this angle. Yeah, you just, you'd love to see that. And, and I want to see that all year as much as possible. Now, not every play can get you, you know, tons of yardage, but I always love seeing these guys try to get as, as much out of every single play as they can. Now, I understand sometimes you have to do things where, you know, so you don't get injured or whatever, but I just, I love that a guy will, will do a little spin move, a little cutback move or whatever to try to get an extra couple yards. It really, you know, it, it really adds to the play sometimes. And, and this is what we were expecting last year when we brought Curtis Samuel in. We were expecting a guy that was going to fight for the extra couple yards, you know. You know, maybe not all the time as far as throwing his shoulder in and getting hit by six different people. But, hey, this guy, a couple cuts and he could have been gone right there. And I, and I think that everybody that does the play call and knows that. Now, here's the play where it looks like Jacksonville's coming out in a cover two. And honestly, with them stacking those receivers over to the left, it really puts them in a position where they need to pick their poison as far as how they do their their defensive scheme here. And as the play sets up, you can see they don't pick it the correct way and they leave the wrong guy open on the inside. Boom. Wide open. Now I realize that that's only a cushion of, you know, a few yards here or there, but watch watch on this on this other angle. I love this this juke move he does. This is some whoop you know kind of i can't do it like Berman, obviously that probably sounded ridiculous but look look at that oh i love that and, and if we could see that all year long you know I, I gotta play that back again if we could see that all year long i would be so happy i mean he would definitely be worth what they paid him i love this little cross route right here i feel like maybe carson took too long to, to let this ball go but maybe that's just me seeing it the wrong way But then, then again, you see Curtis cut back in and get a couple extra yards out of that. You, you just got to love that. Love it. I, I love it. I want to see more of that. Let's see that from the other angle. And the offensive line did a really good job yesterday, I thought. They only gave up one sack. Yeah, I, I, I love that. You know, seeing a closer view of this play right here actually kind of pisses me off because this really could have been something if one of the Jaguars defensive linemen didn't get a hand on it. But the whole field was opened up down there for him to really take off and be by himself there. And I mean, I, you just got to hate it. Look at how open he was there. Antonio Gibson was open too. There's watching from the other angle. Like he was completely open. You know, who knows? A couple cuts and he could have been in for a score on that play. Watch this. Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? Well, this play here, Jacksonville comes out in the cover three, and they were just 
all over this play right here. I don't know if maybe they saw what was going on pre-snap, but they were not fooled whatsoever. Yeah, just not fooled at all. And that's actually Trayvon Walker over there, who's, who is a beast, by the way. I got to see uh, the first hand yesterday a little bit more than I had seen of him before. Now, here's the fumble. And this play here, honestly, probably had a good chance of getting some decent yardage before he let loose the ball. Also, up to this point, he really had seen a lot of touches, and he didn't really see the ball a lot more after this. And it's about the worst thing that could happen in the middle of this situation because they were driving again. This definitely cost us points right here, in my opinion. Everybody was talking about the points that the Jaguars left on the field. I feel like this was points right here that, that Washington left on the field as well. And it looked like the ball bounced back to Samuel at first, and then he just couldn't get his hands back on it. Yeah, just hate to see that. You know, this play right here, when I originally saw it, I wondered what was going on here, and I made a little mental note and wrote something down on, the, on a pad to come back to this one when I got to the coach's film. And after watching it, you can see that Logan Thomas actually misses his block on this. And that's the reason why more yardage isn't gotten out of this play. Because this could have been a decent you know, play here. Go ahead and watch it now. And Logan misses his block right there. See it? Right there. Well, here it is again from this angle right here. You can see that Logan definitely misses his block. And 31's able to get in and make that tackle. The Jaguars come out and cover four here. And I was actually kind of surprised to see Carson throw this ball to Samuel in double coverage there. Um, yeah, I mean, Samuel made a good catch too. You, you watch the replay here from the other angle. Yeah. And it was actually a well-thrown ball the way he placed it so that only Samuel could get it with two guys, you know, inbound on the play. Now, this play here is a play that I like to see a lot of and I want to see more of moving forward. And, it, you know, it gives me the thought pattern like, you know, we don't necessarily have to use only running backs to be able to gain yardage on the ground, you know. And, and uh, Samuel, there was a lot of people last year that were kind of, that were you know, trying to compare uh, Debo Samuels and Curtis Samuel or saying that Curtis could perhaps do the same things that Debo does now obviously I think that Debo is a lot more physical uh, Curtis is more of a, of a finesse style player but yeah I feel like they could possibly do something in a role for Samuel um, that's why I hated to see him with that fumble you know it, it's going to happen especially when you when you're running north and south and you're going at a line full of people with possibly six to seven people trying to strip the ball as i was talking about before with antonio gibson there's going to be some some fumbles there's no way to stop all of them you just don't want to see too many of them but seeing plays like this you know jack the jags come out uh, in what looks like a cover one and they you know they're kind of keying a little bit but he's able to get yardage anyway I mean, I love that. He's able to see that lane and be able to just run right through it. Watch it from the other angle here. I think they're kind of keying on McKissick a little bit more, thinking the ball's going to go his way. You know, up to this point in the game, we hadn't seen any targets going to, to Terry McLaurin at all. I mean, we were already in the second quarter, and Terry hadn't seen the ball at all. And we were all thinking, I'm sure, the same thing. Like, what is going on? Why is McLaurin not getting targeted? But lo and behold, as we all know, it's not how many times they get targeted or, or they, they see the ball. It's how many times they can actually pull it down and what they do with it once they get the ball. And Terry's great at trying to maximize yardage after the catch. This is the type of play right here that I've come to expect out of him. And they were running, I believe that was a little bit of man right there as well, but he's able to, 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 to dodge a couple tackles, get a first down, and get out of bounds. I mean, that guy is the real deal. A lot of people, a lot of opposing fans try to kind of like trash talk a little bit on Terry because, you know, he's not loud and boisterous. He's not like, you know, he's not like certain players that have this tremendous ego or whatever. He's kind of a quiet guy, but he knows how to get the job done. This is the play where McLaurin got the deep ball. In my opinion, probably the closest we're going to get to a perfect play um, at this point right now before they get a little bit more in tune with each other. 
And I'm going to tell you, he just blasted both of those guys in their secondary away with that right there. Like, I, I'm I'm impressed with this play right here, and I definitely want to see more of this. And I definitely think that we will see more of this right here. I mean, you know, there's, there's whatever, but if you would. I mean, and, and Carson just wings it, man. Like, he's he's got a hell of a cannon. Now, I've gotten to the Jahan Dotson portion of this, and this very first play, I know that it was an overthrow, but wow, man. I mean, watch him reach into his bag of tricks and send that Jaguars defender the wrong direction altogether. And he's over there on the sideline by himself, just waiting like, hey, Carson, you're going to give me a chance here. Carson overthrows him. But the, the crazy thing is, is that kid's got such good ups that he almost pulled that down. You know, if he would have had a little bit more sideline there, he would have got that. Like, real talk, like, I realized that he was out of bounds when he pulled it in. But look at that. I mean, the, this kid's got unbelievable, you know, talent hops and drive, it looks like. Like, he does, the, he thinks that there's no catch that he can't make. That's, that's the thing in his brain, you know, and you'd love to see that. I just, if, oh, man, if Carson could have brought that down a little. I absolutely love this play down here in the red zone. I mean, you, you do a little bit of motion with Terry, you bring Dotson in there, and he just is brilliant on his route tree. And, and watch, I mean, you know, it's hard to stop a guy that's that confident that he's going to catch every single pass. And, and you got a quarterback that's, that can get him the ball. Look at that. Beautiful. I just love that. And the other angle, it looks even prettier. You know, I, I just, I love that we have this kind of talent at the wide receiver spot. Now, I wanted to put this play in here because Dotson was the one he was targeting when he locked in on him. And then, obviously, he threw the interception. So, let's go ahead and take a look at it. It's not pretty. You know, if he hadn't locked in maybe he could have found logan over the middle there you know if you if you look across that play again logan was coming across the middle maybe he could have hit maybe he could have hit logan who knows but yeah he stared his guy down too much i'll watch it from the other angle i'm not so sure it's really going to show the angle that great but here we go yeah it didn't really show it that great now, I don't play a lot of Madden these days, but when I used to play a lot of Madden, this right here, this play, this was my bread and butter, all right? I absolutely love these plays right here, and if it's done correctly, he could actually make this catch and turn that corner and be gone, but hey, you know, it is what it is. Watch it back from this angle, and, and look at that clean pocket that Carson's throwing from. You know, if we could give him that every week, we could have decent outcomes every time we step on the field. Now, I talked about Dotson's route tree but man I'm gonna tell you the footwork this kid does is unreal and he like I said in this game he reached in his bag of tricks and kept pulling stuff out and this play right here definitely was one of those situations watch this right here it looks like J the Jags came out and a cover one and I mean he just he completely confuses his guy over here on his side of the field watch this look at this look what 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 all the way around the corner I mean his guy don't even know what's going on like wait a minute what like he scored a touchdown, huh? Like he really did not know what was going on here. Like his guys, like, what's going on here? Like he he thought he had won that play. I really believe it, man. And the thing that's great about this, of course, is that you know he's a rookie, and this was his second touchdown on the day, and he really <laughs> made the defender look silly there. That's something you love to see, a rookie that plays outside of his experience level. I absolutely love to see that, you know, and a lot of people thought that we reached on him, that that, uh, that that they reached on him taking him. What a beautiful catch. Look at that from that angle. Take it back. Look at the def Look at Watch this from that angle again. Beautiful. Oh, my Lord, that's beautiful. Now, as I made mention of when I first started, these three guys were able to put, you know, four touchdowns on the board. And that is the difference that we've been looking for. You know, the game changers, you know, um, a team that can score more than 20 points, in my opinion, with a defense that's just mid-tier 
is a team that can go to the playoffs consistently each year. And I feel like that this team could possibly do just that. Now, I realize that they're playing against the Jaguars, and a lot of people are down on Jacksonville just because of the simple fact that they've not been able to win a lot of football games the last couple of years. So until they prove themselves, a lot of folks are, you know, not really on their side, so to speak. And I get it, but I'm here to tell you that that team is going to be an up and comer in the next couple of years. And they got a good play caller over there. Personally, I do believe that Washington put themselves in that situation yesterday with those two interceptions. And without those two interceptions, that's a completely different ball game. But at any rate, it's always good to turn the film on and see these angles and know that our receivers are where we want them to be and know that Carson Wentz is gonna get the best shot at succeeding because this is, in my opinion, definitely the best set of receivers, the best set of weapons that he's had his hands on. You can't just look at the the the, uh, the wide receivers themselves too. You've got tight ends and running backs too that can all do different things within this offense. Let me know what you guys are thinking down in the comments. Y'all take it easy. Peace.